Hey everyone, welcome to Star Morph, where we talk about artificial intelligence and web development. Today we are going to go over how to train GPT on your own data. We're going to go into an intro of why you want to train and show a demo of what training can do, and then talk about different frameworks and strategies for training your data uh, into GPT. And this is something that Star Morph has been working on a lot. A lot of people are really excited about GPT-4 and want to start ingraining this into their business, but ChatGPT doesn't know everything about your business, so we need to teach it everything about your business. So let's get started doing that. All right, so first I'm gonna demo why we wanna train, and by the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna show you a new bot that I just trained on the Next.js 13 documentation website. So I took this whole website and compiled it and then gave it to my GPT bot, and um, it's now trained on this documentation. And because of that, we can get some really great information about the how Next 13 works and you know, basically have a great programming tutor here. So before we go into this tool, let's see what GPT untrained can tell us about this. So if we ask GPT-4 even, what are the five most important concepts introduced in Next.js 13? ChatGPT, even GPT-4, is going to tell us that its knowledge only goes up to 2021, and it cannot tell us about Next.js 13 because it came out after that. So it can't really help us on this topic. Now, if we go over to the trained bot and we say, what are the five most important concepts introduced in Next.js 13? Now you can see that this is actually giving us real information about Next.js 13, and this is accurate to what is in the documentation. As you can see, these are the main concepts here as well, same as here. And we can also dive into this deeper and we can say, give me a code example of the HTTP cache update in Next.js 13. And the bot can go ahead and give us Next.js 13 code. So this is why you want to train, because if you want to use GPT in your business, you want it to be able to give answers like this, not answers like this that are, you know, great general intelligence, but when it comes to specific tasks, we're going to get a much more refined result here. If you need help doing this, reach out to Starmorph. As you can see, we're training these bots. It's something I'm really having fun experimenting with. And a lot of the tools we're about to go into, I mean, they're developing so fast. They're... There is so much software that's about to come out with some of these integrations, it's crazy. Okay, so let's talk about the tools you can use to train GPT on your data. The first tool that I wanna talk about and probably my favorite tool that I'm working with in web development right now is called Langchain. And they are really pushing the limits on what's possible with using LLMs in the browser and in web apps. And uh, I'm very excited about like all the new integrations that they're coming out with. I can't, I'm, I can't, wait until I have built what I have in my mind right now using this framework. And just this, the things that are possible are crazy. So let's jump into this a little more. What can you do with Langchain? What are the features of the documentation? And how do we use it? So first off, Langchain has a JavaScript documentation, which is right here. And they also have a Python documentation, depending on what tools you're using to build with LLMs. And what Langchain allows us to do is it allows us to train GPT over specific documents. So we're basically going to be using, they have a few options, but you can use OpenAI's embedding um, API to take a document, compile it into the embedding form that the LLM wants, and then send over you know, that vector storage to the LLM. And now it can have information about the specific document that you're training it on. So this provides us the toolkit to both load the documents into here, convert them into the kind of storage that the LLM needs, and we can go a little bit deeper into both of those. Um, some of you may never have heard of an embedding before. Some of you may have already been coding your own models. So I'll just kind of go through the middle on what that means. and. Um, yeah, so let's go into how we can load a document in. We can see that there's a lot of different file types here that we're able to load into our web app and train GPT on. And this is an example of how to load a document in, providing the path 
and we'll jump into the code a little more in a minute. CSV files, PDF files even, and imagine once GPT-4 is integrated with this and you can start to load images as a response. I mean, this is really going somewhere like this is, this is really pushing the limit here. They have an integration here to load stuff from Hacker News, so you can actually go to a URL and load things in. And then let's talk a little bit more about the storage. So as I said, an embedding is a compiled version of the data that you're training it on. And um, OpenAI has an API for creating and sending embeddings to GPT-3, GPT-4. So this framework allows us to it's kind of a wrapper around the open AI toolkit of creating embeddings. And it's really easy to create an embedding from your own document. Um, and then these are different options for embedding databases uh, and the vector storage of the embeddings. So these are a few frameworks. Pinecone is a really popular framework right now. Um, and you have we have some options on how we create our embeddings and how we store our embeddings. And I'll definitely be making future videos about this because it's very important for training that we have frameworks for embeddings. And Chroma, I think, is looking really cool. I'm looking forward to using this as well. I'll make a future video on this. Um, but if you're trying to go deep into embeddings, I would recommend checking this out as well. And yeah, I think that's a general basic overview of some of the stuff in the lane chain framework. So now I'm going to jump into what this looks like a little bit in the code um, for this bot. So right here, this is where we have uh, the loader and we're loading in a, you can see this is a text loader. So we could, if we have a PDF instead, we could just do PDF loader or we could do, I believe, JSON loader. So depending on what you file you want to load in here, you can update that. And then you would also need to change um, where you're loading it in. And then we are splitting the document into different chunks. And then we're creating the embedding vector storage file. So you can see we're using the OpenAI embedding API and we're creating this hnswlib uh, vector storage file of the embedding. And basically what we want to do is we can compile, um, we can compile our embedding, our document into the embedding. And then when we deploy our app, it will be able to send that embedding over to the model and get us our trained response back. So that's a quick intro to LangChain. As I continue to build with this tool, um, we could do a more comprehensive coding exercise building out some LangChain code. Now let's just go into OpenAI's embeddings as well, because this is another tool um, that is available to train your data and GPT. So to put them together. So this is again, what LangChain is integrating, but this is also just a great resource in itself about embeddings and how OpenAI um, allows you to create embeddings and then send them over to the um, OpenAI response to get back from GPT-3. So another option for training your data is rather than using LangChain, you can go directly through the OpenAI API and um, train, create your embeddings just directly with their API. But I think LangChain is really bringing some amazing tools and making it really user-friendly to do a lot of different functionalities with this. Um, and by the way, one of the features that I was talking about that I'm super excited about, actually don't see it in here, but they just announced it, is that they're building an integration with Zapier. And I don't know, maybe it's only in the Python one right now because it literally just came out like yesterday. But they're building with Zapier because Zapier is coming out with this new API that's for natural language. And this is going to be crazy because imagine you can tell a chatbot, send a LinkedIn message 
or send a Slack message and then your prompt. I mean, connecting it to anything, to Gmail, to Google Docs, through a chatbot, being able to perform all of those actions, it's starting to feel like like a super AI that can just like, you know, do all of your tasks from one place. So this Zapier connection with LangChain is going to be absolutely huge. And I can't wait until I build something with this. Um, so I just wanted to mention that because it's it's really exciting integration into LangChain. But um, I hope that was a helpful introduction on what tools are available to train GPT-3 on your data. And if you'd like any help working with LangChain or want to collaborate on a project, uh, reach out to Starmorph. And we would love to chat with you about your LangChain project or training uh, GPT models. And thank you for watching this video. And let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to go over about this topic and we can make a more comprehensive coding video in LangChain or train a bot from start to finish. Uh, but I wanted to give an intro about some of these concepts of training and how we can get started building tools, uh, building GPT tools that are giving us super concise answers. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.